It is the first in-depth look at Vice President Mike Pence's time in the executive branch, and now the author is taking us inside the relationship of two men who really do seem like complete opposites. We're talking about the Vice President Mike Pence and the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Joining me now, CNN contributor Michael D'Antonio. He's a Donald Trump biographer and the author of this new book I have in my hands called The Shadow President, The Truth About Mike Pence. So let me just ask, about the title, first of all. Sure. The Shadow President. I have it right here. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, absolutely everything that Mike Pence does is oriented toward him becoming president. The actually, His decision to accept Donald Trump's offer to be his running mate, but it even goes back much further. By, by the time he left high school, he had decided he was going to be president of the United States. And as he rose through life, becoming a member of Congress and then governor of Indiana, he actually sort of heard in his being God's direction. And, and he thought that God was calling him to now be vice president and, and function as a president in waiting. So we see Donald Trump in this huge crisis, this rolling chaos. And I think with every day, Mike Pence imagines he's one day closer to the Oval Office. All right. I want to unpack that if I can. We'll get to the religiosity in a moment there. But when you're talking about political ambition, if, if Mike Pence wanted to be president from the time he was in high school, all that does is make him like, you know, 100 senators, 50 sure, governors, and 435 sure. members of Congress. Every senator wakes up right. and sees the president in the mirror in the morning. And I think what people overlook is how effective he's been at this pursuit. Mm -hmm. You know, when he chose to run for governor of Indiana, he had been in Congress for 12 years, risen in the leadership. He had a leadership position in the House, but he had never actually authored a successful bill. So what his aim was, was not legislating. It was going out on the hustings and issuing this red meat rhetoric, which few people have heard from him, but it's a thing he does every day, and then getting executive experience in Indiana and positioning himself. He's been very effective at it. And again, I want to get to some of the quotes in the book because they're extraordinary, but just so I understand what you, you're suggesting here, in his time as vice president, do you believe he's maneuvering to get the top job at the expense of the president? Oh, I think, yes. I think he's positioning himself to be the normal guy, the guy you can trust. And he's out across the country continuously now, uh, promoting the president's agenda, but really promoting the development of his own network. He established a PAC before any vice president ever did. His infrastructure for running for office is complete. So should Trump stumble, should he decide not to run again, Pence 2020 would be an automatic thing. Right. You mentioned before his religiosity and his spirituality. One of the things you write in the book is with his oath of office, Vice President Mike Pence became the most successful Christian supremacist in American history. Now, he's not the first committed Christian to be anywhere near the White House. I mean, there have been a lot of deeply religious figures there. There have been. But if you think back to JFK's presidency, when he ran for office, he was asked who's going to be calling the shots? Is it you or will it be the Pope? And he actually signed a statement indicating that his religion would be second to his patriotism. Mike Pence goes around saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a conservative, and I'm a Republican in that order. He doesn't say I'm an American. I think he's a very divisive figure. He would like to impose a religiously inspired politics on our country. That means rolling back uh, marriage equality, it means a ban on abortion, a whole host of policies that are religiously driven, and he's very upfront about it. Well, he did some of that in Indiana. It's, where do you draw the line between whether or not it's religiously driven or those are your political values? I guess well, that's the right, question. Right, but think about how our pluralistic country fits together. It fits together because we've agreed that I'm not going to go tell you, God tells me that I have the right vision and you are wrong. And their faith says that anyone who doesn't believe as I believe uh, lacks God's grace and literally will burn in hell. So this is a, a tough thing to hear from a president. And the Supreme Court is making some decisions along these lines. Yes. Who gets to decide which, ones, which person's faith has the predominance there? We're seeing that in some of these cake decisions. There's a quote here I want to read to you. 
The vice president actually believed he could bring Trump to Jesus, and like Jesus, he was willing to do whatever was necessary to help save Trump's soul. That's true. Within the faith that Mike Pence subscribes to, there's this idea that anything is permissible in the pursuit of a higher goal. So the higher goal would be bringing Donald Trump to Christ. Anything that goes on in order to do that, including Mike Pence abandoning many of his principles. He was always against a religious test for entry to the United States until President Trump said, we're going to do it. It's not in Mike Pence's heart to put kids in cages and separate them from their families, but Trump did it, so Pence is for it. You can go down the list. Roy Moore, there's so many things that he hasn't spoken up on. The, the president's own personal family. Yes, yes. I mean, to imagine Mike Pence with this grabber guy as his running mate running for president is almost mind-boggling and yet he keeps his mouth shut you look at him standing behind the president at various events expressionless doesn't really capture it he you can't tell what he thinks ever michael antonio thanks so much for being with us i promise you this is going to be provocative and start many conversations and i think that maybe that's where you are after at least to an extent